Tyron, thank you very much for joining us today. Before we examine your various assets in detail, I want to begin with a brief discussion of your board of directors. Many of the directors are well known and they've had very successful mining careers. Can you just expand on that? Absolutely. We're, we're very lucky to have a, a lot of pedigree and experience on our board. Uh, first and foremost, I'll hit on our chair, Ian Telfer. He's a man that needs no introduction, but uh, recall he started Wheaton as a $20 million shell, turned that into Gold Corp, which at its, at its peak had a $50 billion market cap. Uh, our CEO, Neil Woodyer, is probably best known for starting Endeavor Mining. Uh, again, he began that with a single asset and built it up through a, a, a consolidation strategy into what is now Africa's largest gold mining company. Um, and then maybe one other guy on our board I'll, I'll touch on quickly is Peter Moroni. Uh, obviously, he's topical, having just sold Yamana to Agnico and Pan American. Uh, and again, that's a company that was started off a single mine and through a series of uh, optimizations and acquisitions uh, was eventually um, uh, turned into a, a 800,000 ounce a year plus gold producer. Yeah, that's a nice way to finish up your career. Tyron, Eris Mining is a South American gold producer with two producing mines. And I want to start with your largest of the two mines, Segovia, which is a gold producer in the country of Colombia. Can you just mm -hmm. start with a brief overview of this asset? What was the annual production in 2022 and what was the all-in sustaining mm -hmm. cost? And what's your guidance for the coming year? Absolutely. So Segovia is our ATM machine. Uh, that's the way we like to think of it. It's a very high-grade asset. It's actually been in production for uh, over a century in one way or another. Last year, it did about 210,000 ounces at slightly over $1,100 an ounce. So it generates a lot of cash. Uh, the run rate is about 85 million US a year. This year, as a combined company, we're looking to produce about 250,000 ounces a year at $1,100 an ounce. That's the, that's the midpoint of our guidance. And Segovia will be the bulk of that around 215,000 ounces. And you and your team have made significant improvements at Segovia. Can you just provide an overview of some of the improvements that you've made and what's it done to your production profile? Absolutely. So we need to give credit to uh, the predecessor company, GCM, which really consolidated a bunch of small mines, expanded the mill. Uh, our central processing facility is now rated for 2,000 tons a day. This is a plant that five or six years ago was running at 700 tons a day. So they did that without significant downtime. Uh, recent upgrades include a polymetallic plant, so we're actually recovering zinc and lead for the first time. Uh, that could generate uh, somewhere around 10 million bucks US a year in additional revenue. Previously, that was going on the tailings. We've also upgraded the uh, front end of the comminution plant as well as the filter press. So the, the front and back of the plant are basically rated for 3,000 tons a day. So I think we'll continue to, 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 to um, expand the limits of this, of this processing facility. And then because of the filter press, we now have dry stack tailings. It's a very clean uh, tailings material, and it's actually used for full in the, in the local community. So most of the upgrades have, have been on, on the uh, uh, plant side. And a big part of the Segovia story is one of growth through exploration. You have a very extensive exploration program currently underway with 10 rigs. Can you just provide a little more detail just on how large the budget is, how many meters you want to drill, and, and where exactly the targets are? Absolutely. So Segovia has been around a long time. Uh, we've got a, a great track record of replacing mine ounces. For the last five years, we've replaced mine ounces with new reserves and resources. Our budget this year is pretty healthy. We're spending 17 million US at Segovia. Uh, that'll fund about a 10 rig program. And if you look at our, our deck, uh, there's a good slide that shows there are over 30 known veins. These veins are defined by some of the uh, artisanal miners. Uh, we've mapped them on surface. Occasionally, they've got a drill hole into them. We're only mining four vein areas right now, so there's a big canvas here for us to go and 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 find new new tons for our plant. And you just made mention of artisanal mining. An interesting element of Segovia is the relationship you have with these artisanal miners, and we don't hear much about this in North America, but it's quite prominent in South America. You have a very good relationship with these miners. Can you just expand on this relationship and how it benefits Harris Mining? Absolutely. So Colombia has a long tradition of small scale artisanal type mining. Um, there's a lot of them in the Segovia area. So we currently have over 68 agreements. These agreements are with cooperatives or private mining uh, enterprises. Uh, it covers about 3,000 individuals. 
And uh, essentially, we work with them to the benefit of the community, our shareholders, and their operations. So we convert them into taxpayers. Uh, they deliver their ore to the mill. They get a cash payment up front for, let's say, 90% of the value of the rock. When we get the assay back from the refinery, uh, we complete the remainder of the payment. Uh, we support them with geological um, resources, great control. Uh, we deliver explosives. We ensure that they sign on to our safety standards. And most importantly of, of all, we get around 95% recoveries, uh, upwards of 95%. Uh, with their traditional stamp mills, they're getting closer to 40%. So there's a lot of extra margin there and their businesses can actually be more profitable, safer. And as some of our, our um, artisanal miners will say, uh, legal mining is profitable mining. So we started with one contract a couple of years ago. We have 68 contracts now, and uh, it really helps with our production profile. So they contributed about 15% of our ounces last year. And that's one of the reasons expanding the mill is so important because that excess capacity can always be filled by some of these artisanal sources. The other thing I'll flag is our grade. So if you go through our um, financial uh, disclosure, uh, the grade is very steady. And one of the reasons it's so steady is at any given time, we have a one to two month stockpile on surface. A lot of that comes from artisanal surf sources. It's very high grade, sometimes over 40 grams a ton. So we can we can always blend the ore and make sure we're sending the mill uh, a steady grade. And that's one of the reasons that Segovia has been so profitable. And Tyron, you just made mention of the fact that the artisanal miners contribute to 15% of your production at Segovia. Are you looking to add or grow this aspect of your business? Absolutely. So we have a commercial team on site that's always looking for new agreements. Uh, as I mentioned, the mill looks like it uh, has yet to find its limits and we can fill that excess capacity with these artisanal agreements. We're also looking to facilitate a similar program at Marmado and possibly one day at Soto Norte. Um, it's really helped with our social license in the country. And I think the success at Segovia is, is a bit of a template to use at other assets in, in, in Colombia. And this is a big priority for the government. There are a lot of artisanal miners and we can partner with, with the government to the benefit of the community and our shareholders. So let's move on to Marmado. That's your second producing mine, which is also based in Colombia. It's much smaller than Segovia, but it has a long and rich history of gold production within the country. What was the total production in 2022 and what was the all-in sustaining cost? So currently we divide Marmado into the upper and lower mine. Uh, so the upper mine is an epithermal system, narrow vein. It's like Segovia, a little bit lower grade, actually uh, much lower grade, uh, around three or four grams. Last year it did 25,000 ounces, uh, sort of marginal on a free cash flow basis. Uh, we're there though for the lower mine. So at the lower mine, we've discovered a large porphyry intrusive. If you look at all of the categories, this is over 8 million ounces of gold. Uh, it's continuous, it's wide, it's bulky. And so what we're looking to do is amend our current permit uh, stick in two new ramps and convert this to a modern uh, bulk long haul operation uh, that will produce around 165,000 ounces a year. While we're working towards that, we are optimizing the upper mine by better understanding the geology, by focusing on reducing dilution and just moving more tons because we're not currently filling the existing uh, process facility. Uh, the plant we have right now can, can uh, process around 1,200 tons a day. Um, and we're not filling that at, at, at the moment. So we're, we're going to slowly wrap up the upper mine while we permit and bring the lower mine into production. I'll also add that the um, asset has a 20-year mine life on reserves. And if you count resources, you're looking at, at multiple decades. Yeah, so this is another foundational asset for us in Colombia. And Tyron, you recently released a pre-feasibility study on the lower mine expansion. Maybe you can just give us some uh, highlights from that study. Absolutely. So it's actually our second pre-feasibility study. Um, we've seen a lot of capital inflation in the sector, so we wanted to make sure all of our numbers were accurate. That came out in September. Uh, we boosted reserves from around 2 million ounces to 3.2 million ounces. Capital stayed roughly the same, around 280 million. So this is easily uh, fundable for us from our current cash and funding sources. What we like about the asset is the long mine life, 20 years on reserves. All in sustaining costs are around a thousand bucks an ounce inclusive of the stream and it's a simple project and we're just expanding an existing mine so we're not breaking ground in the middle of the jungle it's an asset we know well we have a team at site um, and so this is our, our next big uh, source of growth and marmato also has a streaming agreement with wheat and precious metals maybe you can just expand on that agreement yes yeah, so we have a fantastic relationship with um, uh, wheat and precious metals 
the stream at Mormado, once we get our permit, they release a series of payments uh, totaling around 120 million. Uh, now, remember, we already have 300 million in cash. So Gobi is generating uh, free cash flow every year. So I would say Marmato is overfunded. Um, in return for that upfront payment, Wheaton gets a stream on 5% uh, of the gold and 50% of the silver life of mine. They make ongoing payments at around 18% of, of spot. So that was one of the, 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 the funding mechanisms to, to make sure that Marmato goes into production. We've discussed your two producing mines now. I want to touch on your most advanced development project, which is called Soto Norte. It's also in Colombia. It's also one of the world's largest undeveloped gold projects. A feasibility study was released in 2021 on this property. Why don't you just provide us with some of the highlights from that feasibility study? Absolutely. So Soto Norte is uh, an asset that might be recognized under a former ownership, uh, Ventana Gold. This was a penny stock that went from $0.10 cents to $13. I think it's one of the last great big gold reserves uh, uh, in existence right now at a development stage. So in all categories, there are 12 million ounces, but the feasibility study, uh, which was published in 2021, focused on 5 million ounces. Uh, the grade there was 6 grams gold, about an ounce of silver and 0.2% copper. So when you combine the geometry of the ore body, it's very compact. Uh, it can be mined at up to 7,000 tons a day. And you combine that processing grade with gold equivalent grades of around nine grams, it is a very, very low cost ore body. So the feasi uh, feasibility study estimated all in sustaining costs of around $471 an ounce. And even if those numbers are are, 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 are aggressive or, 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 or turn out to be subject to some inflation, uh, whichever way you slice it, this is gonna be one of the lowest cost assets in the world. So right now uh, it's at the permitting phase and we are redoing the technical work before we submit a new permit application. And you don't own 100% of this, maybe you should just tell us about the ownership structure. Absolutely, so the asset, um, we acquired a 20% interest from Mubadla, uh, they are a large sovereign wealth fund. They are not a mining group, but they do have a high mining IQ. Um, they've partnered with us, given our track record in Colombia, as well as our board and management team's ability to finance and uh, the fact that we've built mines all over the world. So we currently own 20%. We paid 100 million US for that. We have a right to go up to 50%. Once we get the permit, it's going to cost us another $300 million to do that. Um, so right now, we're leading the charge on permitting. And Neil Woodyear, the CEO of Eris, is also the CEO of the joint venture company, uh, Manessa. I want to move on now and discuss your balance sheet. You touched on this earlier, but maybe you can just remind us again what your cash position is, what your total liquidity is for the coming year. Absolutely. So I, we've got a fantastic balance sheet. Um, I think it really insulates us from what can be a very volatile space. Uh, I mean, gold's above 2000 at the time we're having this conversation, but uh, the equities haven't fully uh, responded. So we can just put our head down, continue to grow. We don't need to look at what the stocks are doing. So we have 300 million US in cash. Uh, Segovia is generating significant free cash flow last year on the order of 80 million US. So you, you need to keep that in mind. That's, that's going to add to our, our cash pile. And then if you look at our two uh, streaming agreements at Toro Peru and Mamoto, that could bring in another 260 million uh, US. So we're more than funded for Mamoto. And if you look out to when both Segovia and Marmato are running at uh, full capacity, we're generating about 300 million in, in, in EBITDA a year. Um, so strong balance sheet. And I think uh, the management team, uh, the board and the embedded growth is one of the things that separates us from our, from our peer group. And given your cash position, would you consider acquiring another asset in Colombia or somewhere else in South America? You also own a exploration project in the Abitibi Gold Belt area of Canada. Would you think about or consider acquiring uh, another project in Canada? Uh, well, I mean, if you look at our board, uh, they have a track record of being very aggressive on m and If you look at how quickly uh, Neil built up Endeavor and how quickly Telfer built up Gold Corp, uh, that's in their DNA. Uh, we have a great team. We have access to capital. So certainly we'd look to leverage that to grow the company. We also believe that in this gold market, the funds are bigger, so the gold companies need to become bigger. Uh, that being said, we've got a lot of development ounces, over 20 million ounces in all categories. We need more production assets. So I think if we're looking to grow, it's probably going to be a producing cash flowing asset and we'll, and we'll protect our cash. 
Uh, one of the issues we have is we think our stock is, is very undervalued. Uh, we have six or seven analysts covering us. I think our consensus PNAV is around 0.3 times NAV, um, but absolutely we are uh, opportunistic. We're making sure we understand our peers and targets in the space. And we have a board that has a fantastic network uh, and can actually get, get deals done. So we are ambitious. Um, so I would say stay tuned on that front, but our cash right now is earmarked for more motto. That's our focus is get that into production. Tyron, as we wrap up, you've already provided a lot of detail about your various assets and what you're going to do in the coming year, but maybe you can just summarize what investors can expect in terms of news flow in the coming months. Absolutely. So I think the biggest catalyst for our company is permitting Mormato, getting it into production. Once Mormato is running, we're producing 400,000 ounces a year. That's a lot of growth, and I think it's going to drive a better uh, multiple. Um, and I think it's going to prove that uh, Colombia is a jurisdiction that is open to responsible uh, miners and responsible mining entrepreneurs. So that's going to be a big catalyst. And so I would say continued execution at Segovia and Marmato. You also need to watch our drill, but uh, we don't need to take geologic risk. We have a lot of ounces in the ground. That being said, I think all of our assets are geologically uh, prospective. So we will look to put out um, uh, updates on, on, on an interim basis. Tyron, that was a great overview of Eris Mining, and I want to thank you for sharing the story with us today, and we look forward to upcoming developments at Eris Mining in the coming months. Once again, thank you. Thanks for having us.